Have you ever wondered what the pros use for water treatment for their families in their homes? You know, it's a state-of-the-art rocket science kind of stuff that's only available to them. Maybe they're testing it. Or is it older equipment that maybe it was replaced, uh, equipment was replaced for a customer and it's been rebuilt and that's what they've installed in their homes? Well, today I'm going to invite you into my home to see what I've got, why I've got it, and we're going to be starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Welcome. Today I'm inviting you into my home to check out my water filtration system, and I can explain it to you. So for some background, we're in cottage country about 100 miles north of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And um, uh, so because of that, we're on well water. And uh, so whenever you're dealing with well water or actually municipal water, you need a water test. You, we need to know what we're dealing with and we also need to know a few things. Concerns, the homeowner's concerns. Is there staining, is there smell, uh, etc. And the, all those things need to be addressed. So let's start there. So I tested the water and these are the things that uh, we needed to address. So the water tested with a hardness of 13 and after the water softener showed the hardness of zero, not surprisingly, iron was 0.8 parts per million. You start to get staining at 0.3 parts per million. So again, I wasn't uh, totally shocked to find that there was iron staining going on here. After the iron filter, we got zero. Uh, pH was 6.9. And again, that's an important consideration when you're determining which type of uh, iron equipment you're putting in, iron removal equipment, uh, etc. An important uh, thing to test. TDS, which stands for total dissolved solids, is the total mineral content of the water. It came in at 324 uh, parts per million. After the uh, equipment, except for the reverse osmosis, we got 346. And after reverse osmosis, we were getting uh, 18 parts per million. So these are the concerns we had to address too. Is Now I should mention that we've only lived in this home for four years. Uh, we bought this home from a customer and uh, that customer already addressed a number of these things when we put uh, a majority of this equipment in about nine or ten years ago. So some of their concerns are similar to ours and uh, that is the sulfur smell, no one likes that. Uh, the rusty stains, again it was uh, staining the fixtures, the toilets, uh, shower, etc. Scale buildup, whenever water was spilled around the faucets and that there was scale buildup everywhere. So they wanted uh, that uh, addressed. The potential for bacteria. Again, I tell folks, um, there's two kinds of people that buy ultraviolet disinfection systems. The kind of people that have bacteria and want to get rid of it. The kind of people that never want to have bacteria. We never want to have bacteria. And uh, so that's why we made sure we addressed that. We also uh, were concerned about water leakage or uh, infiltration. In other words, a water spill or a water leak. I went through a huge insurance claim uh, 10 years ago when a tornado destroyed uh, the building in which the water store was located. And uh, so I know what it's like dealing with insurance companies. I know what's going, what it's like uh, dealing with uh, water claims, etc. And uh, so I wanted to make sure I could do whatever I, I whatever was possible to, to minimize the chance of ever having that in our home for our family and disrupting our family life uh, like that again. And great tasting uh, drinking water. Everyone wants that. So this is where the water comes in from the well and then this is a Mazzy with bypass and basically how this works is as the water flows through here there's a, a, a venturi in here a very small opening and what that does it creates a suction and a sucks in air through here. This is the first of the three parts that are part of the air berm system and we're sucking in air to oxidize out the iron and the sulfur out of the water. This bypass here the water can also take a route around here so by closing the bypass the more we close it the more air that gets sucked in. The more we open it, the less air that gets sucked in. And uh, so we need to control that. We only have about four and a half gallon per minute flow rate uh, coming from our well. So because of that, if we close this down too far, it's gonna slow down the water even more. And, uh, and then we won't have much water for showering or doing laundry or things like that. So it's important to control. If we leave it too far open, then it doesn't suck in enough air to oxidize the iron and sulfur out of the water. Then when the water leaves here, it takes this big, lazy loop around and the reason we do that is because elbows slow down the flow even more so this big easy loop um, maximizes the flow rate coming through here from there it goes into the pressure tank leaves the pressure tank and goes on to the whole house so after the water leaves the pressure tank this is the shutoff and uh, from there it goes through the flow by mowing leak detection and uh, water shutoff system so this is a great system and i really love this system um, we went through a tornado 10 years ago, had a, a lot of water damage uh, and a lot of building damage for our, uh, our business, the water store. And uh, because of that, I, n I never want to go through something like that again. So this system is great. It detects, 
it, it builds a, a profile of how we use our water, etc. And from there, if it detects that there's a, a lot of water usage going on in the home at a, at a time when it's not typical, it'll shut down the, the water in the whole house. It'll send me a text message, an email, and it'll actually call me to tell me that there's a problem. From there, I can remotely turn my water on or off using my smartphone. It's a great system, gives me lots and lots of peace of mind. From there, it goes up through our air berm system. So there's three parts to the air berm system. So again, I should mention this is a little bit older technology. These days, we'd still go with a chemical freeze type system, but instead of an air berm, these days we would go with an FOC, FOB, or FOK, depending on the iron content of our water. So like I say, there's three parts to uh, an air berm system. There's the MAZI injector, and then from there is the off-air tank, and then there's actual media tank. So the MAZI injector sucks in air and oxidizes the iron and the sulfur out of the water. The off-air tank releases that air, so it's had the contact time to do its job. And then from there it goes through the media tank, which traps the oxidized iron and sulfur in the water, and then it backwashes every three days. So again, chemical-free type system, We've avoided the ozone and the chlorine injection and the, some of the other chemical injection systems. I don't like where all those chemicals end up. So because of that, we've had great success with these chemical-free systems. From there, it goes into a water softener. as 27,000 grain water softener, more than big enough for our family of two. We're empty nesters. And, uh, but even if a family of five or six moved into this home, it would handle it uh, no problem with the degree of hardness that we have. And uh, as you can see, we've got neoprene jackets on it, so it avoids the sweating of the tanks, um, which can damage the floor. I and mean, we've got concrete floors here, it's not going to damage it. But uh, it also prevents the mold buildup that goes on there. And these neoprene jackets can be unzipped, they can be washed and put back on. So that's a great thing. And from there, it goes through our uh, ultraviolet disinfection system. So this is our Hume Safe Water 10 Ultraviolet Disinfection System. It's a three-stage system. So the first stage is a sediment filter, the second stage is a carbon filter, and the last stage is an ultraviolet light. So um, with this system, it's a North American made uh, system. It's actually made in Canada. And uh, so the water flows through there. We also have a solenoid connected to it. And the reason we have a solenoid is that uh, if the power goes off or if the lamp fails for whatever reason, it shuts down all the water. And, uh, and that way you don't have to worry about any untreated water um, getting uh, contaminating the system downstream of the ultraviolet uh, disinfection system. You'll also notice that we have a shutoff over here. The, this is where the water is coming from, the water softener going into the UV when it's time to, uh, to change the filters and to replace the UV lamp and to clean the sleeve. And you can also see there's a shutoff here to keep the water from the house draining down. You can also see the pipe insulation I have here and it's to keep the pipes from sweating, especially in the warm uh, summer humid weather, etc. You can also see that we've got a power bar here, a surge suppressor, and uh, what that does, it, uh, it makes sure that, again, we're in cottage country, that we have brownouts and power outages, etc. And it makes sure that, um, uh, maximize the life of the electronic components that are here. And this is the controller for the solenoid. So this is our reverse osmosis drinking water system. It's a Hume Water Saver 75, which is a high efficiency reverse osmosis uh, system. Very little water going to waste. And uh, so it has the high efficiency membrane. It's a five stage system, but it's had uh, the calcite filter add added on to, to partially remineralize the water. My wife uh, was looking for that. She wanted the water a little bit more alkaline. And so that's what's been added. I've got another video in my, uh, on my YouTube channel that shows you how to do that. And it's also got one of the two tanks. So we actually use two tanks to maximize flow. So there's one tank here and the other tank is right underneath the kitchen sink. Now, because our utility area here here, has an unfinished ceiling in it and the kitchen is pretty much right above here. All this equipment is downstairs here. So it frees up space for underneath uh, the kitchen sink um, for whatever goes underneath the kitchen sink. And uh, you know obviously this could also be mounted underneath the kitchen sink but it frees up uh, space having it down here. Here you can see the second reverse osmosis tank we have. This is immediately underneath our kitchen sink and what that does it gives you a lot more flow and a lot more uh, a lot more quickly for a longer period of time having the two tanks and especially having this one immediately underneath the, the uh, faucet where it's being used. As you can see there's a T in the line and uh, this has 3 8 inch tubing as part, it's part of the Water Saver 75. That's what gives you that great flow. There's also a T in this line that connects it to the fridge. 
for the ice maker in there. So we've got nice uh, crystal clear reverse osmosis ice cubes uh, coming from our ice maker. All of our outdoor faucets are all untreated water. That water is used for watering the, the lawn, uh, the gardens, etc. Except the faucet that goes into the garage. I have treated water going into the garage. I'm a car nut. I love washing my cars and I want to make sure they don't get those hard water spots all over them. To learn more about water filtration and what it can do for your family, click up here for my next video and I'll see you there.